So, all right, we, we have these things that are this positive mass with a little bit of electrical charge that you can steal or push out. Where do they go to from there? You know, you said it wasn't useful for energy, so what do you do with it? Where do you go? Well, if that was all there was, there was this cookie and the chocolate chips, there's no real way to get energy out and power the sun or keep the earth warm. Now, the discovery really came about that there was a bit more to the pudding part of the plum pudding or the cookie part of the chocolate chip cookie and that came about by this guy Henry Becker actually someone else discovered it independently 40 years earlier and didn't think anything of it um, entirely by mistake okay. now we're in the late 19th century and the scientific world has been incredibly excited by the discovery of x-rays ah yes okay We've all been through a number of these sudden, like cold fusion or whatever it is, suddenly something comes out that seems totally ridiculous and everyone wants to do the experiment and That's measure right. it. And back then it was x-rays. These mysterious rays could penetrate through pieces of paper or even wood or even bones and expose photographic plates that were wrapped up in dark paper. So everyone was jumping on the x-ray bandwagon. And this guy, Henry Becquerel in Paris, decided to jump on the bandwagon. He was an expert at phosphorescence. Oh. Now... Phosphorescence is what makes uh, glow-in-the-dark stars glow. So these things, you put them outside in bright light during the day, and then when you put them inside at night and stick them to your roof, they release the energy. So somehow they store up the energy from the sunlight or any bright light. And then slowly... Release it by glowing. Yep. So it's not violating energy conservation. There's no magic source of energy in these things. Um, now he decided maybe these phosphorescent things actually not just a bit light, they might have been x-rays. I mean, x-rays are the trendy science topic of this year. Um, so he decided to go through his large collection. He was studying phosphorescence for many years. He decided yep. to go through his large collection of different phosphorescent things and expose each one to the sun yep. and then put it on top of a wrapped up in black paper photographic plate and see if that photographic plate got fogged by the x-rays getting through the black paper. So he started working through these things. They had a whole bunch of different phosphorescent chemicals, one of which was uranium salts. Ah. Which turns out is a good thing for making glow out of the dark. Well, actually, it's a very bad thing for making glow in the dark stars because <laughs> yeah. it's radioactive, but he didn't know that at the time. <laughs> and he had a few cloudy days in Paris, and he just had the uranium salt sitting in a desk drawer on top of a wrapped up photographic plate. Yep. And for reasons that no one's ever explained, he actually decided to develop this plate, even though it hadn't been part of his experiment. And he discovered that there was fuz on it. You see there's like a cross here. That's because he had a metal cross in between the uranium salts. Ah, uh, so here's a layer of salt and in, in covered, and then he had something in the middle of it. And so it turned out that even when it had been a cloud, it's sitting in a dark desk drawer, it hadn't been out exposed to the sun, the uranium salts were emitting something. what he thought were x-rays. Yeah. And this is amazing because this seemed to break this energy always comes from somewhere. For normal light glow in the dark stars, you get the energy from the sun, it's yep. stored up and released. But here you have something that hasn't stored up energy from the sun, and it's still emitting radiation. So he had to figure out, or at least the discovery was, that there was clearly some other source emitting this energy. Yes, yeah, so it just seemed that these uranium salts just sat there emitting energy. Nothing was coming in, but energy was coming out. So, of course, this led to another huge yes. boom of excitement. Not only do we have x-rays, we now have, what are we going to call it, um, radioactivity? Perhaps? Yeah, that just a, a substance, a chemical that just sits there putting out some sort of radiation. Yeah, there was someone famous who actually worked on radioactivity. Of course, a Marie Curie. And what they did was they um, started looking at actually purifying which elements actually were responsible. Oh, okay. And they found that uranium did it at a low level, but they found some elements, uh, like radium and radon gas, yes. which were actually much more radioactive. And they could fog photographic plates really fast. And a huge amount of experimentation purified these things, uh, leading to the, uh, to the discovery that this is actually generating so much radiation, they would get hot. So these, so these elements, these things, were generating... or energy that they hadn't measured before. Yes, they weren't chemically reacting with anything. Yeah. They just had an element which generated heat. It didn't have to combine with any other element. You didn't have to put electricity into it like with the no, tube. No, you didn't have to expose it to sunlight. It just sat there generating radiation and heat. And people immediately started thinking, apart from this is totally weird, <laughs> 
uh, maybe this is something that could help power the sun and the earth because ah. we seem to be having energy coming out of nowhere. Yes, which has been the problem that we've had for the sun. Where does the energy come from? The trouble is the sun isn't made of radium. That's true, and it's not made of uranium either. No, but nonetheless, it's the first crack in the wall. At last, we're seeing what looks like energy coming from nowhere that could actually be rather useful here. Mm.